Hey, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create realistic reflections of objects on shiny surfaces. I provided a Photoshop template of an empty picture frame on a background for horizontal photos and pictures and vertical photos and pictures. Their links are in my video's description or project files. For this example, I'll use the horizontal format. The steps are the same for both. Temporarily hide the frame layer. Make the background active. We'll convert it into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. Click the icon at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. In version CC 2014 and later, go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and Tilt Shift. In earlier versions, go to Filter, Blur, and Tilt Shift. I did an in-depth tutorial on Tilt Shift, so if you want to watch it, I provided its link as well. If you don't see the on-screen controls, press Ctrl or Command H. The Tilt Shift filter customizes our image's focal depth. In photography terms, it's called depth of field. Our image will be the most focused between the lines above and below the center widget. Drag the widget to an area that we want our image to be the most in focus. The blur grows progressively from the solid lines toward the dashed ones where the blur reaches full strength. The areas outside the dashed lines are 100% blurred. We can drag the lines above and below the widget, which will determine how much will be in focus. The further away the lines are from the widget, the more of our image will be in focus. Rotating the outer ring of the widget controls the blur amount. We can also adjust the blur amount by dragging the blur slider to the right or left, or by just typing it in. When we're happy with its depth of field, click OK at the top. Make the frame layer visible and active. Control or Command click it to select its shape. Invert the selection by pressing Control or Command Shift I. Open your rectangular marquee tool and make sure the Intersect Selection icon is active. Drag the tool over the inside shape to select it. If you want to see its shape, press Q, which inverts it to a quick mask. Revert it back into a selection by pressing Q again. Open your Channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Click the Save Selection as Channel icon. Name it Inside Frame. Click next to the RGB channel to make all the channels visible and click the thumbnail of RGB to make all the channels active. Hide the Inside Frame channel. Open back the Layers panel. Next, we'll place a picture inside the frame. In CC versions, go to File and place Embedded. On earlier versions, click Open, Find Your Image, and convert it into a smart object. Find and click the picture you want to use and click Place. Then press Enter or Return. Open the Channels panel and Control or Command click the channel of the inside frame. Open back the Layers panel and click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to your picture. Click the chain link icon to unlink the layer and the layer mask. Doing this allows us to resize and reposition either of them independently of the other. Make the picture active and open your transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to a corner. If you're using CC 2019 or later, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag it in or out. On earlier versions, press Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it. To reposition it, just drag your image. To accept it, press Enter or Return. Double-click an empty area of the layer to open its Layer Style window. Click Inner Shadow. The Blend Mode is Multiply, the Color is Black, and the Opacity is 40%. The angle is 90 degrees, the distance is 3 pixels, the choke is 0%, and the size is 4 pixels. The contour is linear. 
In this image, it doesn't look much different. However, if you're using an image in which the top has areas that are light or bright, you'll notice a thin soft shadow along its top edge, which is the shadow cast by the picture frame. I'll press Ctrl or Command Z to undo the last step, which restores its position. Link back the layer and the layer mask. We'll convert together our picture and the frame into a smart object. To do this, shift-click the frame layer to make it active as well, and convert them both into one smart object. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Make the lower one active, and make sure Auto Select isn't checked. I'll explain why in a minute. Go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Vertical. Press and hold the Shift key as we drag it straight down until both bottoms meet. If Auto Select was checked, our Move tool would have made whatever we clicked on our screen active. In this case, it's the top layer. Reduce the reflection's opacity to 30%. We'll copy the Tilt Shift filter to the reflection by placing your cursor on this icon and pressing and holding Alt or Option as we drag it to the reflection layer. Click the arrow next to the reflection layer to open the filter. Double-click Blur Gallery to open Tilt Shift. Adjust the depth of field of the reflection so it's in focus at the thick part of the frame. The blur will be 100% approximately here. Increase the blur to between 25 and 30. Then click OK at the top. Next, we'll add a shadow cast by the frame. Control or Command click the new layer icon to make a new layer below the reflection. Name it Shadow. Control or Command click the thumbnail of the top layer to select its shape. We'll fill the selection with black, but before we do, check your foreground and background colors. If they aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. We'll fill the selection with the foreground color by pressing Alt or Option plus Delete. Deselect it by pressing Control or Command D. Open your Transform tool and go to the top middle anchor point. Press and hold the Shift key as you drag it down to approximately here. Go to a corner and press and hold Ctrl Alt Shift on Windows or Command Option Shift on a Mac as you drag it out approximately this much. Then press Enter or Return. Change its Blend Mode to Color Burn and reduce its opacity to 60%. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it two pixels. Open the Rectangular Marquee tool and drag it over the top half of the shadow. Go to Select, Modify, and Feather. Feather it 25 pixels. Go back to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 20 pixels and deselect it. Lastly, we'll rotate it in perspective. Shift click the top layer to make it and the reflection layer active as well and convert them, including the shadow, into one smart object. Go to Edit, Transform, and Perspective. Go to the top left or top right corner and drag it up. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.